A lot of you guys have been texting me lately saying that I was inspiring, that my videos were quite motivating, and some of you even asked for some advices for their own life. The truth is that I am living in an everyday struggle to keep up with my habits, to resist the temptation of falling back into some addictions, and to keep up with the standards of life that I set for myself. And the same guy who is always talking about the importance of consistency and system built is the same guy who didn't post any video for two months. Okay, it's been more than two months. It's been 70 days. Instead of keeping on blaming myself and telling myself how unworthy I was to build a community on self-improvement while I was not even able to make videos for two months, I decided to try and understand the reasons why I failed at my habits. And there are a couple of them. Number one, the environment. I usually live in Spain throughout the year and since I spend most of my time there, I created the surroundings that inspires me and that motivates me to somehow create videos every single week. As my university year was over, I came back to my country to visit my family. And while the surroundings are quite nice and comfortable, it is not my usual workspace. And I realized that I needed something specific. And to make it easier to understand, here are two examples that are probably more reliable for you. If you are on a diet, trying to lose weight, then you definitely don't want any junk food or soft drinks in your field of vision. Instead, you want to surround yourself with healthy recipes book, fresh veggies, and water. And if you are a student studying for finals at university, then you surely want to get rid of your Xbox on your desk or your phone. I did not have a proper space to work on, and nothing around me was sparking any creative ideas in my mind. This is a very strong argument to why I have been failing and it will probably be the same for all of you guys who are wondering why they cannot get where they want to be. The author of Atomic Habits, James Clear, highlights the power of the environment and shows us how much it can influence our life through a very basic example, agriculture. While it would be totally unreasonable to try and grow the same product from southern region into northern region, it would be totally acceptable to move from west to east. And the reason why is simply because the environment is quite similar. Temperature and humidity on the same latitude doesn't vary much from east to west, which is profitable for farmers and product growth. This exact same situation applies to your own life and to mine, actually, because this is the main reason why I have been failing at my habits. It is very important to have an environment that boosts your goal rather than to slow them down. Number two, negotiating with myself. I think we all know this feeling of motivation and adrenaline at night when it comes to what we are willing to achieve on the next day. The truth is that a lot of people, including myself this summer, would rather think and plan their ideas rather than executing and achieving their goals. And there are a couple of reasons behind this. First of all, thinking is way easier than doing. While thinking about what you are going to achieve the next day, you live through an experience that probably releases hormones in your body that make you feel good to make you feel you've already achieved this thing. However, while waking up in the morning, you start to realize that you need to actively participate in this achievement, and there goes away the motivation. We tend to love thinking and planning our successes, but also love to disregard the details. And in my personal case, I have been thinking every single night about how badly I wanted to make videos again, how satisfied I would be after filming a couple of videos and then the next morning came in and it was way easier to snooze my alarm rather than to make videos in an unusual place. While I was waiting to wake up every single morning, this very vicious routine started to set in. I would negotiate with myself for a couple of more minutes of sleep, which would actually turn into hours. Hopefully I quickly realized the downtrend that I was on and I decided to act very quickly in order to save my mornings. As I read the Miracle Morning book, I realized that waking up in the morning wasn't a personal struggle, but that it was widely spread. And the lesson that I got from this book is very basic but quite powerful and it is like snoozing my alarm basically meant giving up on my day and saying no to living new experiences. Now I am not saying that Waking up early again is totally fine for me, that would be a total lie, and it still is a huge struggle for me. But the pain is nothing compared to the satisfaction I get from doing things in the morning and achieving something in the first hour of my day. There is another negotiation with myself that really helped me fail at my habits this summer. Before arriving to my country, I was being very consistent on YouTube. 
I was posting every week, even though I had finals and my retakes that I surely could not fail. I managed to make time for these videos. When I arrived here and I started to not post for a week or two, my brain managed to negotiate and to tell me that as I failed to share one bit for this week and broke my uploading schedule, it was not worth doing it again the next week. And then one week of no upload turned into two weeks and then into a full on month. And the more time was passing by, the stronger the negotiation with myself was becoming and the more far I was from making videos again. Now, if I look at this with an external point of view, it is as ridiculous as if someone would tell me that they had a bad Monday, therefore their week was ruined. Or if someone would quit their job because of something they failed at once. Number three, the lack of trust. The third point that helped me fail at my habit is very common and I've talked about this before. The summer, I went from creator to consumer in a matter of days. As I stopped sharing videos, I left my creative mind drowning. What I want to say here is that as my own journey takes time and a lot of work to get to a point where I want to be, it is extremely easy to slip out of it and to start dreaming of someone else's journey. I fell back onto scrolling on Instagram and seeing people growing, starting with new opportunities in their journey, and for some reason theirs looked better than mine. Now this is where the funny facts comes in. It is so easy for us to compare our weaknesses to other people's successes. Thinking that I cannot keep up with that type of video, nor that sound quality, neither that good looking face. But on the other side, it is so hard, almost impossible for us to sit down and compare our strength. Like the fact that I deliver a somehow good quality content without any degree in videography, or that I inspire people sometimes with my sayings or action. Here, it is all about trusting the process. Whatever you are doing in your life, it will surely take time to reach a somehow achievement, and during this whole time, you need to trust the fact that you are on the right path. And if you have a bad day where your weaknesses are more highlighted than usual, then sit down and start thinking about all of the reasons that make you worth sharing this journey. I've been overthinking my content so much that it ended up in no more video making for the whole summer, which if I think about it now is absolutely ridiculous, but oh, well, we all learn from our mistakes. Okay, so now that we have seen all of the reasons why I have failed at my habits and life system this summer, here is how I managed to get back into it. First of all, I lit up the creative candle in my brain again by arranging my surroundings. We've talked about the importance of the environment before and it only took me a few couple of steps. I did not like my desk anymore and it was not attractive to me to sit down and to think about video ideas. I took some photos, sold it, and went to Ikea to get a new one that fits my expectations more. This already is the second desk setup that I sell simply because I feel that, that I am in creative rut. Um, and by simply putting a small effort such as taking pictures of it and selling it and changing it, is already a huge step into a better and more inspiring environment. I also managed to gain confidence back on my own content and stepped back off my scrolling on social medias. I sat down and thought about what made me a worthy creator and wrote down what I thought I could offer to people that others couldn't, or at least not in the same way. The list was surprisingly not empty and it did feel good to have the support of my girlfriend to highlight these skills. The last thing is to remember that great things take time. And even though it has always been in my head somewhere, it is sometimes very easy to forget about the journey and to only focus on the achievement that is still really far from where we were. I thought again about how I could make my video workflow flow less so that it would be easier to trust the process rather than if making videos represented such a huge friction in my life. It takes almost nothing to make a workflow frictionless and a few steps can already help a lot. Putting your camera to sight next to your desk clean your surroundings from destructive objects and only have around you things that will benefit your workflow, not slow it down. It does feel amazingly great to be back at making videos. Uh, our community is slowly but surely growing. I received a tons of DMs on Instagram. It was five, but it feels like a ton. To thank me for my videos saying that they were extremely inspirational and motivating. But it is you watching this video that I would like to thank for the support that you give as always. I hope that you found something interesting in this video and I'll meet you in the next one.